Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Somos Biology. We've been talking about plant photosynthesis and in this video I'm going to talk about the C4 pathway of photosynthesis. I know most of you uh, provided me like asked me questions related to what is the difference between C3, C4 and CAM pathways. There are so many confusions regarding all these terms. But in reality if you understand this pathways fundamental concepts you will never forget about the difference because you first need to understand why a plant opt for three different types of pathways. Why it opt for C3, C4 and CAM. Now the first thing that I will recommend you to watch is rest of the video of this series. Because till this point we already talked about the overview of photosynthesis. We talked about the light reactions in details. We talked about the Kelvin cycle in details. Now for understanding this video you need to understand Kelvin cycle very well. Because in Kelvin cycle what happens? Kelvin cycle is known as C3 pathway of the photosynthesis. That is the, the most common type of pathway that is opted by most of the plants. Now the idea of this C3 pathway is very simple. The carbon dioxide fixation. The fixation of carbon is brought by the ribulose 5-phosphate. Ribulose 5-phosphate. Converting this 5-carbon component into a 6-carbon unstable intermediate that will produce three carbon components into two molecules of that. This is the idea of the reaction of C3 pathway. And this first step of the C3 pathway producing the three carbon component G3P resaldehyde 3 phosphate end. That is a very important step and for this step it requires a specific enzyme and that enzyme required here is known as Rubisco. Ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. This is the name of the enzyme. And Rubisco is the most abundant enzyme in the whole world because it's present in every single aspect of the photosynthetic organism's body. Okay. Now, what is the problem with this pathway? This pathway works very well if the supply of carbon dioxide is well. So, if the carbon dioxide concentration is high, there is no beating C3 pathway. C3 pathway is the best if the carbon dioxide concentration is high in the environment. But sometimes what happens along with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere we have oxygen, right? And plant also need to take oxygen for the aerobic respiration. That's a completely different thing without that plants won't survive. So whenever plant is opening the stomata which is the place in the mechanical part of the plant that is present in the leaf of the plant. So opening the stomata can either take carbon dioxide and oxygen and actually both carbon dioxide and oxygen take entry through the stomata and as we know in the atmosphere the, the ratio of carbon dioxide oxygen is kind of same it doesn't matter whether it's a daytime or night time so the opening or closing of the stomata in the day or night time doesn't influence this particular pathway it doesn't influence C3 pathway it doesn't influence C4 pathway either but the idea is you need to have more carbon dioxide why because this Rubisco can bind with both carbon dioxide as well as oxygen. So if it binds to carbon dioxide, if it interacts with carbon dioxide, involve carbon dioxide to interact to ribulose bis phosphate and convert ribulose 5 phosphate, converting it to the actual intermediate that is required which will ultimately produce the sugar. So utilization of carbon dioxide will be best. But if Rubisco interacts with oxygen, then what will happen? It will fix oxygen with this 5 carbon compound and that in a term will produce a completely separate component known as glycophos, like it's known as the glyconate or phosphoglyconate at the very beginning. So if it fixes oxygen, it produces, let me write it at this point, fixing carbon dioxide at this point will give you glucose at the end. There are so many intermediate stages and fixing oxygen will turn into phosphoglyconate and then phosphoglyconate will be converted to glyconate. Now once they make this glyconate compound, glyconate is not a natural compound to, to produce glucose and they need to undergo several rounds several different steps to finally produce glucose so 
during those stages they require energy and this energy is wasted because through the normal process of C3 pathway you can directly produce glucose without investing this extra energy but here this extra energy is a waste so here you can see the first step of carbon dioxide fixation is the most important step of the Kelvin cycle and it requires the enzyme Rubisco ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase as it says it has two separate activity fixing carbon while known as carboxylase activity and fixing oxygen known as oxygenase activity now if it fixes oxygen that is waste of energy for the plants while fixing carbon dioxide is what the plant needs in case of the first general process rubulose 1,5 bisphosphate is there as a reactant carbon dioxide and water is required and the carbon gets fixed into two molecules of phosphoglycerate and once the phosphoglycerates are produced the process can work properly but what happens here is the idea while rubisco fixes oxygen instead of carbon dioxide it will lose half carbon as carbon dioxide it will cost 2.5 extra ATP every single time it does so. In this case, this process of oxygen fixation only occurs in light and it occurs almost one out of four reactions under today's atmospheric condition. Now, why we call it a waste of energy? Let's say rubulose 1,5 bisphosphate to begin with and we have rubulose RUBP carboxylase oxygen is activity of the enzyme Rubisco. So if it carries the activity of carboxylase, then what it will do? Produce 3 phosphoglycerate converted into the sugar throughout the normal process of Kelvin cycle. While if it starts fixing oxygen, known as Rubisco oxygenase activity, it will convert the ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate into two components, phosphoglycolate and 3-phosphoglycerate. 3-phosphoglycerate will be produced in very less amount which can be converted to sugar through the normal Kelvin cycle. But the phosphoglycolate that is produced is an unwanted intermediate because this phosphoglycolate can be converted to glycolate. But again to convert glycolate back to an intermediate inside the Kelvin cycle we need a lot of energy in the form of ATP and also we need to bring the glycolate from one place to the other. We need to transfer it from chloroplast through the peroxisome, through the mitochondria to finally convert it back to an intermediate that can take entry into the Kelvin cycle again. That is waste of time and energy for a plant cell. So let's look at it how that thing works. In the reaction one is goes like ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate due to the fixation of the oxygen by the RUBP oxylase activity oxygenase activity converting it into phosphoglycolate then phosphatase activity is there cleaving a phosphate group from phosphoglycolate to produce glycolate once glycolate is produced it will be transported into the peroxisome where uh, it again interact with oxygen producing peroxide and converted into glyoxylate the glyoxylate is then converted to glycine involving glutamate converting to alpha ketoglutarate so once glycine is made, then only we can transport that from peroxisome into the mitochondria. Well, the glycine is converted back to the serine through a process requiring uh, the reduction of NAD. And also it will produce ammonia and carbon dioxide in this process. So while serine is produced, serine is retransported back to the peroxisome. Serine is converted to hydroxypyruvate. And then hydroxypyruvate will be finally converted to glycerate inside the peroxisome and that will also require another round of NADH and the oxidation of NADH. And once gly glycerate is produced at the end product in the peroxisome, then in the reaction number 7, taking glycerate into the chloroplast and converting the glycerate into 3-phosphoglycerate by providing extra phosphate donating from ATP, consuming one molecule of ATP at this point and then only the C-phosphoglycerate become a part of the Kelvin cycle and return to the normal Kelvin cycle pathway. So 
due to one mistake by the rubisco of fixing oxygen a whole process needs a seven set of reactions to finally produce c phosphoglycerate and initiate the job of kelvin cycle in a normal way again that is a lot of time consumption as well as the loss of energy and the loss of the molecules like nadph that is the reason this whole process is bad and this process is known as photorespiration photorespiration because in this case plants are utilizing oxygen and you know oxygen is linked with the process of respiration that's why we call it photorespiration because it only takes place in the presence of sunlight and actually in the presence of light so to prevent this waste what is the way plant can take to think that only rubisco can bind with carbon dioxide it should not have any access to oxygen because you know you cannot separate oxygen and carbon dioxide from the air so the best way to do that is compartmentalization in the plant cell itself so in the plant cell where the process of photosynthesis is working which is the mesophyll cell right the mesophyll cell of the leaves where the photosynthesis is taking place so in this mesophyll they actually have two separate boundaries in the plant cell we have the mesophyll cell so let me draw here the mesophyll cell and we let's say the bundle seed this is the bundle seed cell if you look at the anatomy of the plant we have two separate components mesophyll and bundle seed bundle seed cell is a place where there is no chlorophyll so no light reaction can continue but mesophyll cells it is green containing chlorophyll it has all those chloroplast out there now the thing is what's working at this point of the mesophyll normally c3 pathway completely takes place in this mesophyll okay but the modified version of that pathway takes place both in mesophyll as well as the bundle seed remember that and whenever you compartmentalize the plant and and the process of this reaction is compartmentalized as well in the mesophyll and bundle seed that is a modified version of c3 pathway and we call it c4 pathway okay so let me write here this is mesophyll and this is bundle seed okay now why the plant cells have this compartmentalization now what they did here is they put all their rubisco in the bundle seed cells so no rubisco is present in the mesophyll now normally rubisco is found in the mesophyll in the c3 plants but for the c4 plants with this compartmentalization they store rubisco in bundle seed which does not have any access to oxygen now you getting the point as they are separating rubisco in a separate compartment it will never get oxygen neither it will get raw carbon dioxide so that is another problem we are preventing rubisco into interact with oxygen so that's why we store it into the bundle seed but doing so preventing the carbon dioxide also to enter into the rubisco or, uh, in engage in interaction with the rubisco so now what is the way that carbon dioxide can take entry but oxygen cannot the best thing is let's take carbon dioxide in the mesophyll cells only and along with carbon dioxide oxygen will also come because stomata will open so carbon dioxide and oxygen both can come now then what they will do is convert this carbon dioxide they they take this carbon and fix it with another component phosphoenol pyruvate and convert it into oxaloacetate so while interacting with phosphenol pyruvate with carbon dioxide producing oxaloacetate with the help of the enzyme pepsico or phosphenol pyruvate carboxylase oxygenase so here this pepsico converting it into the oxaloacetate which will be further converted to malate so once malate is produced malate can be transported from the mesophyll into the bundle seed cell what do you know here is that the carbon from the air from, from the atmosphere is already fixed into the malate so what we are producing 
फोर कार्बन कॉम्पोनेंट हॉस्पिटल पायरिवेड इज ओनली सिंगल कार्बन कॉम्पोनेंट बट ऑक्सलो एसिटेट इज अ फोर कार्बन कॉम्पोनेंट एंड दैट्स हाउ इट्स फॉर्म अ फोर कार्बन कॉम्पोनेंट एंड वॉन्स दे फॉर्म दिस फोर कार्बन कॉम्पोनेंट एट द एंड विच इज मैलेट देन दिस मैलेट कैन बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू पायरुवेट so once we produce mallet once we produce pyruvate from the mallet it produces it releases the carbon dioxide because mallet is a four carbon component pyruvate is a three carbon component so carbon dioxide gets released so now this carbon dioxide can interact with rubisco and the normal process of c3 pathway will take place in the bundle seed cell so actually in reality the the pathway of kelvin cycle is taken place in the bundle seed cell in this case while the process initiates in the mesophyll so what we are doing here is we are providing a carbon carrier mallet acts as a carbon carrier binding to the carbon and converting it into the mallet ultimately mallet carries that extra carbon and then donates it into the bundle seed because you know now we know in the bundle seed oxygen is restricted to enter so rubisco will only get carbon dioxide to work with and rubisco once get only carbon dioxide the process of c3 or kelvin cycle will will be accomplished without any problem so in environment where we have both oxygen and carbon dioxide this pathway is the best way to go so the pathway of c4 so c4 pathway is very important and helpful if there is low concentration of carbon dioxide and if the temperature is very high of that environment in both these cases the pathway is really really helpful because you know in if the temperature is very high cells generally don't want to open the stomata very well because if they open stomata water loss will occur for the plant so for those cases as well we can transfer the carbon dioxide whenever the temperature is little low we take the carbon dioxide and transfer it to the bundle seed in a in a mode of the mallet transport and then they can utilize it so that is the c4 pathway and the reason we call it c4 pathway because the first stable intermediate here this oxaloacetate or mallet whatever you take mallet that is a four carbon component that's why we call it c4 pathway while in the normal mode of kelvin cycle the first stable intermediate is a three carbon intermediate that's why we called it c3 pathway so that in a sense is the process of c4 pathway and the example of this c4 pathway is for corn there are different plants like corn sugarcane these are the examples of the plants they utilize c4 pathway for better utilization of carbon dioxide and better fixation of carbon dioxide with the help of rubisco so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you